Hey everyone, my name is Umi Ali and I'll be reading my poem Lost Sands of Home after Robert Hass's The Beginning of September. In the waning moon, I wake up to night blooming jasmine. Birth, the color of poppy fields. Death, cloud cover and coyote brush. I didn't, but all he saw was my virginity. My children pick dark cherries too hard to bite all pit, they are nascent plums, too soon. I awaken to the smell of grief sizzling in a cast iron skillet. The bed is empty. I search between the sheets, overturning pillows. My tongue responds to consonants only. No towels behind our bathroom door. I call your name like unheard alarms at dawn. Outside the shed where quiet leans over our fence, finding nothing on the road back. In the kitchen, the bowl of fruit sits empty. Silence tastes of charred hope and mint tea. The top of the stairwell is where curtains are drawn so close that I forget what I came up for and pause in my steps, trying to remember if I lost or left you. Does it matter what I do if there are no words left in you? My daughters love their new hijabs the black one with green gems, the white one with pink flowers. They fight to choose first, to be seen. Desert baptisms were different, but the sand rejected me just the same. There were always too many lizards. There were never enough prayer beads. Where do I belong if I don't belong here, in my kitchen, in my skin, no country wants me. If I call them all mine, do I still land on my feet? Date pits line the concrete. The cherries aren't planted yet. My son isn't conceived under a spill of supplications and paper moon crescents. He didn't, but all I saw was my virginity. Lemon wedges, chopped cilantro, green chilies, and ginger on a chipped bone china plate. Things she left behind, her prom dress, its taffeta too heavy to cross the Atlantic, her bow and rosin, her shame, her favorite shawarma place, posters of Ricky Martin, her abaya, incense sticks, her prayer rug, old birthday cards, John Grisham, her locker combination, date palms, her Amr Diab CD, obedience, dust storms, charcoal eyeliner, her father's indifference, lava lamps, prudence and her empty diary, things she brought along, herself. Drown in shallow water, he said when I spoke of my own marriage, the other side of my father's pride. The persimmon tree flourishes, they never end. We keep giving them away, they are loved. My parents share in abundance inside wrinkled polypropylene and occasional silverfish. I despise them. At night, I only hear crickets. They mock the silence in my skin. Hi, my name is Rachel Crawford and I will be reading a poem entitled The 15 Minute View. There is a view of San Jose from 680 South my mom calls the 15 minute view because in 15 minutes she and my dad will pull into the parking lot in front of Washburn Hall to pick me up even after they drove all week to Stockton for my sister's trial, because I failed every class the semester of my sister's arrest, and my mom does not want to risk another daughter struggling, and every Tuesday through Friday, my mom rides in the car with my dad for 62 miles so they can sit at trial and listen to what strangers have to say about who their daughter is and what she did or did not do before driving the same 62 miles home to Vacaville, only to do it again the next day, and every day of the week but Mondays, when they go to work, because there is no trial on Mondays. And on Fridays after trial, they will drive 75 miles to pick me up at San Jose State, and my mom will call at the 15-minute view, so that I can be ready with my backpack of textbooks I will not read, and a bag of laundry my mom will wash and dry and fold for me and we will drive the 90 miles home from San Jose in Friday commute traffic on 680 North, 
while I listened to classical music instead of my parents sharing what so-and-so said at trial. And on Saturday, we will drive 66.6 miles from Vacaville to the county jail in French camp to visit my sister behind the glass, even though all I want to do is stay home and sleep and not read my textbooks or write my papers or study for midterms. And after we visit for the allowed 45 minutes, we will drive back home to Vacaville the 66.6 miles and pick up dinner at China House because my mom won't feel like cooking. Since the next day is Sunday, when she will make the 180 mile loop to take me back to school on 680 South, where we drive down the Sunol grade and pass both Mission Boulevards. But as we come to Scott Creek Road, my mom will point south to the skyscrapers in the middle of the valley and say, this is where I always call you. See, it's a 15 minute view. We will be right in front of your dorm in 15 minutes every week during the three month trial. Hi everybody, my name is Lady Q. Curtis and I'm going to read two poems today. First one is called Jacked. Jacked. A small tear appears in my jeans where my thighs rub together, but I still slip them on Button up, cause once you slid your hands over them, dug your thumb into the small of my back. Every touch is woven into their threads, every finger lingers. God damn, how have you been? I want to ask, but instead I stare at a picture on Instagram, jam my fist into my mouth to keep myself from typing out. I might have loved you once, but now I just remember it. Maybe you'd say back, oh, don't kid yourself. No love looks like running a hand over your ass for two minutes. Probably you're right, but haven't you questioned what it would have been like? Replanting the redwood evening over and over is my specialty. I've run it so many times now, the smoke and fog are clogging my pores. Unreal as it is, I still know what it's like to press my hand to your chest. Volcanic as it is, I still dream you willing and me unhinged. Every Xeroxed frame is a little different. Yoked into this story is the zipper and how you never got around to unzipping it. Reaffirming a pre-existing belief. Um, and it has an epigraph that says, If I were younger, I would be plucking daisy petals. And it's from a Rose, Lucy Rosenthal poem called Mushrooms. Instead, I trace my finger in the dust of the hatchback of this Honda, then the one after. Strike that. I pencil a name, make it my own on the back pages of an empty notebook. He loves me. The next one meets me at a bar. We spend years, strike that, pretending. He loves me not. I make mac and cheese by cutting the mold off the cheddar. The key to the heart is my cooking, or it's slow poison. I love he is not romantic, but I fall in love with the idea of forever until it gets off at the next subway platform. Whoosh goes make-believe. Love, he's not awake. Helping, talking, touching. I love a la filet. This is all the plucked ox-eyed daisy petals on the kitchen tile. They smell fresh. They've been there for years. I vow on my dirty knuckles. I fall on my needy me. I'm Laura Gillard, an MFA alumni class of 2005 native of San Jose, five generations of Azorian Portuguese ranchers. In keeping with the theme of staying home, the way to San Jose, I will read several of my poems from my book of poetry, Kissing the Bee, published by the Bitter Oleander Press in 2018. My first poem, Hanging On. The house leans toward the road. She waits for someone to open the door to the place where her mother was born. No one at the window waves. The old homestead settles in her chest. This is where they lived, set boundary fences, plant posts. The well dry now, the creek diverted. Clouds darken her memories. She remembers when the oak tree stood tugs at the stump, pulls on long roots and dank echoes. With seeds in her pocket, she smells the hope of rain and counts the seconds between lightning and thunder, distance narrowing. Light strikes her and splits the sudden sky, 
Rain flows through a hole inside herself. Memory glitters into clarity. My next poem is called The Crossing. No one walks the cattle path now, no one but the cows. I follow tracks deep in the ground, sinking into spring ooze, where several layers down lie those who cultivated this land. In the soft ticking of weeds I hear singing, harmonies I do not understand. The wind hisses the names of the dead, and from a clover bed, without wings or halos, they rise up to walk the pasture. When a hawk drifts down, hooked claws extended, my feet crush lupins and buttercups. I run toward Mount Hamilton Road. From an oak, a shadow of birds explodes and the air hums with souls. No breath, I reach paved road and walk toward town. Ranchers wave when I pass as though I have forgotten something, as though I should turn back. My last poem, What Matters in the Morning. When light fills my window and overflows the sun across my bed, I watch the mountains move closer, coming home with the daylight. A monarch flutters into the garden, rests on a hollyhock, peacefully opens its wings. I see something shimmer between the cornrows. It's my father in old shoes and coveralls, Hoeing, tracking weeds along snail roads, standing up straight, head bent and focused on the endless furrows of his 86 years. The sun shines greenly on his hands as he listens to roots inch deeper into earth, watches baby spiders hatch, flex their legs. When he sees me at the window, I hold my hand up to wave. He holds his. We are palm to palm. Hello, my name is Daryl Dela Cruz, and I have two very recent poems for Legacy of Poetry Day. Recently, I've been digitizing home videos uh, from VHS tapes, and I try to send those digitized copies to my family. So I wrote poems about uh, some videos I've seen. Um, the first poem is called Home Video 1988, which is a 22nd poem. The second poem is a bit longer and is called Home Videos 1989. Uh, it's basically, these two poems came from what I thought about uh, when I was thinking about the theme, staying home the way to San Jose. So um, I just want to say thank you to the opportunity to share these. Home Video 1988. We play the image of the ocean. Again, the scene of you before and after discovery. You play waves. Over saturation of blue pastels and then the sun. We play the misaligned voice track you heard, then trace the mouth calling for help for putting things away. And here's me drowning, next to others passing me, the recording of brightness. The lens takes in all the light. And here's me drowning. Here is Home Videos 1989. One, films of fadeaways, former fathers and families, laughter tendered from every recut juncture. At the age of five, I lack focus, like a shot panning over great grandfathers. You should remember the names of. I told you again, you don't listen. The tape continues as the next scene shows me pretending to sleep. 2. On her wedding day, the priest proclaimed my sister as Filipino, seeing how wonderful this multicultural union is. My Japanese mother is standing behind her. Ruining the moment is another cut of me in a mullet saying congratulations in an American accent. 3. When my uncle died in April 2020, I looked for him in blueberry trees. How he evaded the camera just by searching for the ones we couldn't reach, plucked them and passed them to his youngest daughter. Then in the distance, his older daughter held out her hand so he could take out a splinter. And in his closeness, he blurred. 
I didn't need to see his face. This is my COVID-19 collection. We are celebrating the word today. I want to start with my 22nd challenge for what you could sing while washing your hands. Here we go. Wash your hands and don't get sick. Take your time, don't be too quick. Lather up with suds and soap because COVID's not a joke. Scrub in between your fingers. Did you mop your thumb? Cleaned underneath your nails and kill Corona scum. <laughs> All right. Do you know the way to San Jose? If not, forget about it. It's not the best time to visit the Bay. Stay at home and be safe. Because Corona is cray. She cray, cray, cray. This piece is called Sudden Death. There's a gnat in my wine that will never part the Red Sea. The cause of death uncertain. Did he drown or did he OD? Irrational rations. No TP, no snacks. My fridge was packed. Walmart, stat. Also, get a gat. Quarantine facts. Won't well, God make a way? Didn't you want to work out? Well, um, not today. Time for recess. Mama needs recess. How does your teacher do this? <sighs> Grab your mask and go. D nice breaking records. Club Q saved me. Celebs are in there a lot. Am I VIP? Hug deprived. I'm not feeling it. I want a real hug, my friend. <sighs> when will COVID end? Lockdown. When I think of home, I don't think of prison just yet. My place is shelter. Zombie, a cop apocalypse. Are you a zombie? What's your virtual background? Sorry, you're muted. And last but not least, this poem is called This Contaminated Culture. I was told our culture is contaminated. I was told it's definitely not sterile. I was told it's our job to clean up the mess. Solution to use alcohol from the barrel. I was told to only work with cleaning vessels. Told to be careful around the hood. I was told that there's no need for inspection. Told our tissue was no damn good. I was told that everything needs to be labeled. Told to ignore the sweat and condensation. I was told that yes, there is a lack of balance, but this is beyond PC. I mean, a PH conversation. Not in public, no broadcasting about a system. <sighs> We're talking about phosphate buffered saline. Not in public, no broadcasting about a system. This, is, this, this, this isn't about Bert and Ernie's lab being pristine. I'm guessing we didn't have the right concentrate, but this isn't about reconciliation or a tainted cell. This is a warning for us to investigate the matter. We're lab partners, right? Sometimes I can't tell. Thanks for listening. Kindness is not canceled. Self-care cannot be stolen. Purpose will not be postponed. If only the masses had gotten the message that distant and distance are different. Being alone might not feel quite as lonely. Being at home won't feel like house arrest. If only we had learned to connect. Hi, my name is Brandon Liu and I'm an MFA in creative writing at San Jose State University. And today I'll be reading a couple poems for you as part of SJSU's Legacy of Poetry Day event. 
The first poem I have to read for you is part of the SJSU's Best 20 Second Poem Contest. And you can check it out at the hashtag Best 20 Second Poem SJSU. And my poem is called Quarantine Respeto, or The Hygiene Poem. Okay, here it goes. Don't touch your face, don't dust your pants, make sure to always wash your hands. Don't wipe your brow, don't touch your eyes, just keep your hands right by your sides. To keep in touch, just use your phone and always try to stay at home. And if you do this every day, then everything will be okay. Okay, great. So that's, that's the first one. The second one is more in the theme that we're having for SGSU's Legacy Poetry Day this year, which is staying at home and what home means to us, especially in regards to San Jose. So this one's called Dear San Jose. Dear San Jose, what are you? A landscape, a city, a community of people living in a place? I've heard you used to be a farming town where orchards used to stretch for miles along the hills and valleys. Today, San Jose, I walked through your streets and marveled at your high-rises and your suburban expanses. San Jose, you are a city of change, but I will not say progress. You are too much for that. I stopped telling people where I am from. They don't know where it is and what we do here. In high school, I told my friend I'm going to San Jose State, and he told me he was surprised because I was too smart for that. San Jose, who are you? A big city, a sleepy town? You've got four quadrants like a compass, but nobody knows where the lines end. You've got a big older brother named San Francisco, and everybody would rather hang out with him than you on the weekends. San Jose, you are not perfect, but I love you too much to leave. I've loved your hills since I was young. I've come to know the color of your sky and the breath of your people. I've always said I stay here because there is always something happening if you look. San Jose, you are my pride, my problem child, my parental guidance and my muse. You are my hometown and that will not change. I will not shirk from your shade, nor will I shrink from your shine. I do not know what makes you different, but I know what makes you mine. Thank you. After distant lessons, let me slip into an eerie daytime quiet. Set these lenses aside, find my legs and stretch. Tell the fearful voices, keep your distance. Turn off the news, put the latest dope down. Stop dying in misery day after day. Lay some fresh slate without acknowledgement. Or bread enough to spread butter around. What, did you sign yourself in for the dough? Think you'd take laurels, sell them on eBay? We're not in this cell-by-cell -cell battle alone. Days crowd together, trapped safely at home. Whenever we were ordered inside, when were we ever ordered inside? In those childhood days, before the knitted brow, in textbook reaches of elder recall, when you dropped in to the institution. The real-time tally grows ghoulishly high. I heard that my sister in New York is fine and rejoiced. She wore that morbid crown for days. I don't know a single soul who has died of this globe-trotting plague. No home-crushing news. We honored my grandmother's life just in time to gather with feeling and optional touch. That was in the land of the 6th of March, before non-essential contact went online. I weep for the families in separate shock, trapped inside their stages of lonely grief. Whenever we were told to wear a mask, when were we told everybody wears a mask? I've prepped for this since I first came to town. 
Never got within six feet of my neighbors. Rarely. I may have touched a naked hand. Open-air lockdowns take more than paper tolls. Passing blank shelves and shrouded faces. Standoffish courtesy suits us fine. Whenever restaurants and bars are shut down. When were they ever shut at sundown? On Sundays, when weeks had separate days, when scenes get boarded up after trouble, when quakes or floods pull the plug on the night. Let's meet where we sit, not sit around and fret, except guitars at a neighborly pitch. Do you know the login for San Jose? Doll yourself up or show off your loungewear. Pants not required, but remember those bottoms. Don't reach for a shelf and zoom in on a mess. But if the service gets cut at the source, when did our service get cut at the source? In storms that disrespect our networks, by cyber attacks that feel unprovoked, when another bright light departs from this world. I will never badmouth these buildings again, at least not at first when they let us back. We always find cracks in the places we love.